Welcome back. This is episode 16, and I am going to show you a different kind of looping construct. If you watched the last lesson, you know all about the while loop and break and continue. And I am going to show you a specialized version of that called the for loop. So let's do a real quick review on the while loop. I've got an initialization section. I've got a condition. I've got some work to do. And then I've got an increment. This is a common while loop scenario. However, I can replace that bunch of code, including this GS info down here, with that. A little more streamlined, but very specialized, typically used in counting situations. Not always. Here is my initialization. Happens once. Imagine this is the while loop. It's outside of the loop. Happens once and only once. Then it does the comparison, just like that first statement in the while loop. Then it does the work. It doesn't come back and do that increment, the third part. These are semicolon separated. These three parts, they must be semicolon separated. And do not forget the var statement. If you do, you could run amok with other variables called i. i is a very common variable, especially when used for counting. And if some other code somewhere is using i differently, your loop will do some really magnificently strange stuff. I've done it before. Don't forget the var, you've been warned. It, the syntax is for var equals i. Now you could have a different initializer in here and you could have a different condition, but generally these three are associated together. Again, semicolon, separated. So initialize, compare, do the work, increment. Compare, do the work, increment. Compare, do the work, you get the idea. Until this compare evaluates to false, just like the while loop, then it will drop out of the loop. Again, continue and break. If you watched the last video, continue and break work just the same. I could have an if condition that says, if i equals three, continue. I don't necessarily want to do the work part or any further work in the loop. If the condition is three, let's continue. It jumps back up to the comparison. The i is less than five and, and does it. Hopefully, I'm sorry, it, it does the increment and then it does the comparison. My, my mistake on that one. So this is a typical for loop. It works exactly like you would expect, zero, one, two, three, four. When i becomes five, the comparison is false because it's no longer less than five. But if you think about it, I have five different iterations on here. I wanted to do this loop five times. So one might think, continue until i equals five, but of course that would mean I'd get a sixth iteration. It would run while it's five. And I want to, don't want it to run while it's five. The value at the end, oops, sorry, the value at the end is going to be five. So I can not only tell how many times I've run this, but I get those values out of it as well. So that is a for loop. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget the var part. Continue and, and break work the same. I have one more special loop for you in the next video. You're making good progress. You got the basics down. This is Real easy standard JavaScript stuff, of course, not the GS info statement, but I will see you in the next one for a different kind of loop. Ooh, intriguing. Join me there.